being blessed with the Holy Spirit to understand these things that we see both in scripture and in, and in code as well. Hmm. And um, there are, the, that's this verse that's right in here, the, 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 uh, the book, the book, the book. And then right here you have, uh, and he is opening in Judah and the king of Judah. And then down here you have from, from uh, code, from code here. And then from, a, from the Ruach. Hmm. And then down here you have the word saf sapphire stones. And uh, the word, the book again. Sorry, what's the keyword? It's uh, and and he is opening the book. It's, oh yeah, yeah. it's it's from Daniel twelve, yeah, sealing up the book to the time of the end. And you have the word, uh, Allah Samak Vav Nun. That spells calamity or or uh, trouble or mischief, but it can also mean the end. So he is o he is opening the book. And it's the end, <laughs> just like it says it in Daniel, we'll seal up the book until the time of the end. And then uh, you have the code of the house of Yahuwah right here. So uh, anyways, you have um, Joshua's scriptures in here where he's talking about the stone. Uh, the stone is a witness and um, oh yeah Jonathan is right here you have Jonathan he is opening and you have Yahushua right here and then my name is down here running right through here he is opening you know Chris he, um, months ago Jonathan had got this wild hair and he started entering all the names of the people who were in the program at that time. And it showed up in Daniel 12. Oh, yeah. yeah. You remember that? I don't know if anybody remembers that. But it was, it was a very, it was, it was one of those hair stand up on the, you know, at the back of your neck type moments. Like everybody's name was in there. Yeah, Rick, I did a table on that just with the people that are like where I am in the, in the course. And we were all in there. Geraldo was in there like four times. And uh, my last name was in there quite a few times. My first name was only in once. But it's interesting. I don't think I got as far. I'll have to go back now. I didn't get as far as to see what scripture it was from. Hmm. I've got to get better at that. That's amazing, isn't it? It is. It is. E everyone I looked for was there. I mean, I didn't get to everybody, but it's very yeah. cool. Yeah. I did a little table on... Just a quick thing here. Uh, my brother was curious about the codes and didn't think there was anything to them. So he said, are we all in there? And I said, we're all in there, everybody. And he said, prove it. So I did my, my us siblings, my mom and dad, my um, grandparents on both sides, first middle names and last names on most of them. We're all there in this one area. And we were born in Niagara Falls, Ontario. And the whole code was this big, long river looking thing. So he was mm. just fascinated. That's wonderful, Wendy. What did you use for your access term? My father's name, Lyle Whitley, Lyle Edwin Whitley. Or oh Lyle. my, yeah. that's wonderful. <clears throat> that's very cool. That's wonderful. Keep going. So is it okay for us to like, like my dad was adopted and stuff and he had 12 siblings and um, he comes from Finland, and it's it's okay to do stuff like that to like put our own family in there. And um. well, I, I don't know exactly on the okay part. I know that with Jonathan, he told me that Yahua told him to look up the code searcher. Right, right. And that was where, like, it was something that was guided by Yahua from to do. It wasn't like. He didn't really want to see what was in there about himself, you know, right. it's like, well, I know where, I mean, I guess this is what it's like. It's like, I know where I've been. I don't want to see it again. You know? <laughs> and I know uh, where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know where I'm going. I know I'm good on that or toe mm -hmm. on that. 
And I only did it, I didn't go looking for prophetic things or anything, just found our names, proved where we lived, and he was amazed. Even Niagara Falls was in there. Everything was in there. Well, you know, it's a I mean, great tool to be able to show people, you know? It's a witnessing tool. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And I could see people using it for that. But yes. when they when they turn it into a Ouija board, yes, that's, yeah. that's where I get it's get, it gets creepy for me. Uh, and what it did I was, for my brother? Oh, I'm sorry. What I did for my brother was then he started listening to things about um, Hebrew, and now he's interested in the Hebrew language, and he uses his you name and Yahuwah. He keeps now, that's the fascinating, isn't it? I mean, that's I a, love that. That's a great story. So that was for the I, glory of Yahuwah, as opposed yeah. to uh, like a lot of times, Jonathan, and I'm sure it happens with Chris Ray too. It's like, can you look me up in the codes? Can you look me up in the codes? I think I'm supposed to move to Israel, but what does it say in the codes? Mm. Yeah, that's a different. That's a different spirit coming from there. Exactly. Yeah, it's more like. Yeah, it's you just, I mean, I put it? I put my. I put my name in there is because I'm a, I mean, I can't help it that we're living in these times where Daniel prophecy is supposed to be f fulfilling, where the books are supposed to be unsealing and all these prophecies are happening around me. I mean, that's not my fault, but to be, to, to, to be a part of that and have my name show up because I'm a part of that. That's, oh. you know, that's just, just, just a little bit different than just, right. it's a confirmation as opposed to, okay, all of my, like, Darla said, or should I move here? Should I move? Well, let's look in the codes and see if we should be. That's that's the or, wrong. That's the wrong. For clarification, exactly. Yeah, yeah for self clarification, yeah. exactly. Right. Um, I actually have an example. We were we we're talking about barley and earthquake the other day. Uh -huh. I want to just real quickly talk about that. Uh, I want to spell it, barley. Okay, you see here you have gates, gateway of gates, air, hairy. <laughs> gates, garments, gatekeeper. KB Hall Bandia. Actually, it's got to be in there somewhere. <laughs> Horror. So, but anyways, one one way it spells barley gate a bunch of the bunch of words one way, but then you turn take the same word and you spell it the other way, and you get something else. Okay, what do you, mean you spell so it's, it not, it's not un, it's not uncommon to find words in the Hebrew language where they're spelled one way, but then exactly the same spelling, but in reverse to have it means uh, mean something have a meaningful word but means something else okay so it's it's not uncommon in the hebrew language to, to find that okay like so backwards? if you're if right yeah, forwards having, and backwards so if you yeah forwards and backwards so. if if you were this is what i'm getting at if you were to look at daniel it, chapter 8 verse 12 where you actually have the year backwards you have the word one way, meaning and she did. Then backwards, it's it's the, the letter sequence isn't just grammatical, it's it's a numerical sequence. Yeah. So it's by by the own he, Hebrew mechanics and how words can be interpreted, it's not violating anything. It's actually this is not divination when you see a year in a scripture being used as a word. It's actually revelation. It's not divination. It's revelation. Very good. The same, the same as, as uh, second Samuel chapter 19, verse two, where you see the, the year 5775 as a word right there. It's a complete word. And, and just point out what that is, by the way, it's uh, the salvation, right? The salvation is actually a derivative of you. you. That's, a, that's a year that he just showed you. Hey, Tav, Shinai, and hey. Right. Wow. I'll uh, give you the Strong's notes so you can see. Deliverance, help, safety, salvation, victory. Mm -hmm. And the sense of rescuing. Okay. Now, 
Now, if you take that, okay, I had this pulled up. If you take that and you look in the Daniel 43 code and you have 5775 encoded along Daniel 911, but if you read it in the context and how it's being used and the victory that day was turned into mourning, victory is being turned to mourning in the same context that you have uh, Jews who are look, looking for a Messiah to show up and are going to be disappointed when they don't get Messiah. They get, they get the enemy instead. Yes. Victory, victory turned to mourning. You see? Mm -hmm. they, Very good. So this is not divination. These words have meaning and, and place in, in Bible prophecy, I believe. And I believe when the Ruach leads you there, it's completely different, you know, than when you're kind of like searching it out, you know. Right. And this Bible code here, the Daniel 43 Bible code, wasn't meant to, because there's a, there's a date in here. You've got 5776, 8R26 in there. Um, that wasn't given to me to glorify myself. That was given to me by the Holy Spirit in order to confirm that the visions that Daniel had were for our time, that we are living in that time. And, and it, it was confirmed. And, you know, so it's, it's glory to our Heavenly Father for showing it, that us confirming the time that we're living in. Okay. So that's not divination, that's, that's revelation. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, and I think you you've shown a very clear um, difference there. Uh, the, the the ones I was pointing out earlier um, is different than this. It, you know, they uh, a lot of times they have this huge narration at, at somewhere in their video where they're making all these predictions and it's, it's having to twist things around to do that. Um, it's just making a lot of assumptions and drawing conclusions from these terms. Uh, it has got to be the Holy Spirit. Um, if, it, if it's got to be explained and, and it's just not apparent when you look at it and you look at what's going on here, it should tell you something uh, right off the bat. When I read Daniel 9 or uh, 12, verse 3, let me just pull it up here. Actually, verse 4, but though Daniel sh shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time in the end, I, I started to see his book, not just the book, but his book, the book of Daniel specifically seal up his book to the time in the end. I know that there's codes in all the books, but the Holy spirit was kind of moving everything else out of the way and showing me his book. There's things in his book. Well, what, I mean, okay, if I'm I supposed to look at something in the matrix in his book, what ELS am I supposed to start with? That's when I started uh, looking at the 70 weeks of Daniel's prophecy and the fact that the last week is on the 69th week. So 69 times seven is 483. That's where I got the idea. Okay, 483 would be a good uh, page width to start looking at and that's where I started and this is how it's come out and there's four years in here. There's 5775, 5776, 5778, 5777 up here and 5778. Let me oh. just point out that that's very good search methodology that he just pointed out there. The other with um, Anne and the 10 virgins and how she used that outline and terms come out of that outline. Right. That is good, solid methodology when you're searching in those kind of standards. Uh, when you're making shots in the dark and there's huge margins for error, uh, that is not responsible code searching. And I see that in other places on YouTube with uh, stuff that's coming out. And that's why we're, you know, we have to fight the uh, naysayers and with the credibility issue of codes. Um, I qu quite frequently get. Um, judged on my channel for something somebody does on their channel and uh, i have to defend yeah yeah 
but can I tell you one thing? Sure. Uh, actually, because this uh, the, the difference between revelation or divination, um, it's it's very interesting. In the book of Daniel, he uh, I don't remember exactly. It's like seven seven times seven times seven or something. Oh, this is sound this. Um, he calculates mm -hmm. from the from the word of Yahuwah how long Israel will stay in Babylon, mm -hmm. and he knows knows exactly the year when they will get free. Yeah. So that's that's revelation. That's like he knows it from the word. Yeah, you, Daniel even mentions uh, the prophet Jeremiah and what he yeah. had written, uh, and this is how he count. Daniel knew how many years it was going to be. Um, yeah. uh, Ezekiel, um, if you wanted to know for each of the kingdoms, Ezekiel 4 gives you right there when he is told to lay on one side and then the other, and then you calculate those numbers, you can figure out when the end of the curse is. For uh, Judah, it was roughly uh, seven years in Babylon. For the diaspora, for Israel that was exiled, um, it's been 2,730 years. Uh, and the Great Awakening was somewhere around 2009, 2010. Um, that's, that's why a lot of people were doing this and they're wanting to go back to Torah uh, or st study Torah. Uh, what is this Old Testament? We, we were totally, you know, how's the scripture goes? Uh, we, we inherited lies and vanities from our fathers. I found something very interesting. Uh, in his Bible code tonight. I just, 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 just found it. Really? Okay. This verse here is, is Daniel chapter 10, verse 16. This is the vision of Daniel that made him so sick. Uh, and behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my uh, uh, Adonai, uh, by the visions of my sorrow, are turned upon me, and I have retrain, retained no strength. Yeah. That's this line that's right in here. Yeah. And you'll find the word I ran right here. Mm. Okay. Now, I've showed this before, but there's a word in here that stood out, the word sorrows. The word sorrows is what I had pointed out in another session. And um, if you look at the scripture, uh, the prophecies of Elam have already been fulfilled, but yet Daniel is having a vision and encoded right in there. It's about Iran. Yeah. Perfect. He's already had, okay, let me put it this way. Go all the way back to chapter 10. Okay. In the third year of King Cyrus of Persia, the thing was revealed unto Daniel. Okay, this is the third year of King Cyrus in Persia. He's there. They've already taken over Babylon. This is already past the Elam. Yeah. So what okay. is happening is Daniel is is being he was transferred over from one conqueror to the to another. We had Nebuchadnezzar and then Cyrus. So he's recounting in the third year of Cyrus. But then he has a vision of Iran from Persia mm -hmm. uh, and for our time attacking Israel. Yeah. See, Daniel was shown. Uh, that's why you have the statue. He was shown all these kingdoms and everything that was going to take place. His, he was sick and retained no strength because of the, the gravity of what the father had shown him. Right? He saw the future. He saw that it was, it was going to be, you know, he was having it rough. Daniel was definitely having a rough life, but what he saw didn't even compare, uh, and it made him sick, physically sick. Um, and and I think that's great that you pointed that out, Chris. Um, Iran encoded right there is probably what he saw today. That's incredible. Yeah, it's an it's, it's also, also a a, right. It's also another confirmation that uh, we should be seeing the, the, the prophecies of Elam repeat again before we see the Ezekiel 38 war. Actually, that's, that's what's da down here. Um, you have my name, Chris, and then 5778, and then Russia mm -hmm. from the horses, 
and then you have here the altar and then the 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 feast of tabernacle as written uh, from the book as judgment well wow. All, all down here in this, this here is the book of Daniel right up to this line here. And then it goes to Ezra. And then from down here is in Ezra where it's talking about the temple and the year 5778 is down here. That's up here. Because Ezra is a time of restoration. Right. And you have, 5777 up here, which is crossing Daniel chapter 7, verse 6, where the leopard is given dominion. And this code here about this date uh, confirmed to me that these are all biblical years that are in here. None of this has to do with civic years. These are all from Nisan to Nisan, not, not Tishri to Tishri. Hmm. Yeah. So Hallelujah. very good. There's also <laughs> there's there's also the year fifty seven oh eight, which is uh nineteen forty eight, May fourteenth, that was Yar five. Yar mm -hmm. five is encoded right along here, and then you have the word se seventy years, and right up on top it says the codes of the prophets seventy years. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, really, now that's a really cool cluster you got there, Chris. Okay. The codes. The codes. He's talking about Bible codes. That is the word um, used uh, for Bible codes. And it's just one letter off from Kukudi, which is precept. Uh, precept by precept, line by line. It's just one letter off. Um, what scripture did you find that under? Uh, this is mostly Daniel and going into Ezra. And so this is real, and it's at a 483, which he, the, the methodology he got, I'm just summing up for Chris. I could let you do that. It's okay. <laughs> but That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I just thought it was amazing how uh, Chris used that methodology and uh, got that width. Now, he, he dialed in his, his cylinder width, guys, and then found an axis term there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did a reverse. This is a reverse lookup. I typed in the scripture first, like a big line, and then I changed. I went up here to mm -hmm. to where you you can see your your Makes cylinder sense. width. I mm -hmm. manually change it from one to four hundred and eighty three. Yeah, and this and, and and so what happens is. Father knew Chris was going to do that. You see it all in one line. It's got Chris's name, a year, and uh, you know details about Russia all in one line. Um, that's all lined up. When he put this on 483, everything lined up uh, to where you know he was able to extract this information from there. And that's uh, that's how you know you got a very good solid code, not just because there's a bunch of graphics and you know some great music and things like that. Uh, it really makes a good YouTube video, but is it a solid code? Are you leading people into deception or are you bringing them into some revelation? That's the question. And um, I commend you, Chris. You come, you come so far in, uh, in your search methodologies. And, and Chris, I want to, I want to point out something that when we had, we had gone through an, a, a, um, a period of time about, I don't know, three, four, five months ago, and where we were getting off on these weird tangents and it was really clear that while the codes were, were definitely there, it wasn't inspiring. Um, it wasn't inspiring um, revelation in, in a scriptural sort of way, in a, in, in a way that you were witnessing in a way that you were, uh, you were, um, you were glorifying the father and, and, and it, it was really, it was clear to me, and I'm sure it was clear to other people at the time. It was like, you know, is this really what we were, were supposed to be doing here? And so we ratcheted ourselves back. So it's like self-disciplined ourselves mm -hmm. in a way where we said, you know, let's just focus on reaffirming what's already in Scripture. Now, that's, you, a, that's a great way. Yeah. And so this isn't, uh, I'm not, uh, th th there's, there's obviously revelational stuff that you're pointing out, but 
But in, in, in the context of teaching um, a, a self-discipline about this so that we stay, you know, on, on that narrow path, that we don't go into Ouija board land. Right. right. Yeah. It's, yeah, this, this Bible code, as a matter of fact, somebody, are, two people have already done this with this Bible code. This very Bible code was taken by other Bible code researchers and done just that. They were making divinations and making making uh, statements about Obama, because you'll find Obama in this code too, yeah. by the way. And, and yeah, just massive quantities of garbage, of hooey. Right. And, 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 and those, all that came and went, and none of that stuff came to pass. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, we gave you everybody leeway in uh, early on in this course right. to search out things in modern terms. You know, uh, we had a couple that were interested in, in you know, the disappearance of Julian Assange and Eric Snowden and where is um, Bashar Assad? And we had a student that said, the Holy Spirit told me that they're all dead on three different occasions and, you know, had great tables and lots of, you know, did good annotations and stuff, but wanted, she was wanting to make predictions out of it and draw conclusions just because she found some loose associations. It wasn't even a tight matrix. Um, and I was trying to get and drive home to her uh, that um, e to even come close to something that is probable as far as is maybe going to happen, it has to be something very tight and it's usually, you know, 90 degree angles and, you know, there's just you, who is all over it. It's got all the tells of, yes, of, yeah. of, yes. of, of div div divinity, you know, yeah, like the right. father. It has all the tells. For here's instance, another here's another code that the same thing was hap happened. It was taken, and because it has the year fifty seven seventy five and fifty seven seventy six standing right on top. I mean, it all looks good when you put in jubilee and and rapture and the and the two the two years. Oh, it all looks good. But wait a they're second, they're all related. Those names, those there are. It's already gone, and those those years are no longer valid for our time, but they still have grammatical value. Well, not only that, it was the years within you, you, you were working in, in this table, right? So um, it, it's a, it's a benchmark in time of when, you know, yeah. discovery took place, but, um, but to, to draw out of it and say right. something's going to happen on that day, uh, you can't do that. It has to be in hindsight, it, and you know I know this troublesome for some people because they want to hear. Well, we want to know beforehand, you know, and it just and it completely blows over them. The Father has revealed so much if you just look at it. Mm -hmm. For instance, Amen. the exciting spring, uh, this comet that was going to have a close approach with Mars in 2014. Now the word it, it's had collides over the axis term with collides like like a 90 degree, and then. Um, and ELS right next to it. I thought it was going to be a deep impact. Notice the difference of the words, collide and deep impact. There's no relation there, right? Deep impact is straight on. Collide is it's something where it bumps and grades. Um, and that for a whole year, I was telling people, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a deep impact. And it was all about well, how I was reading this code, um, the detail in that, just, just a couple of degrees off, right? Well, we found out a year later after, you know, we, we, they got data back. And, of course, there was video footage of a flashover on Mars. And there was indeed a collision. Uh, and so the code was actually, actually spot on the whole time. And Jonathan was saying, deep impact, deep impact, right? And I was wrong about it. And so the, what does it do to credibility? Well, Jonathan's not very credible. But for the code's sake, for you who was sake, it was spot on the whole time. That comet actually collided with the atmosphere of Mars and there was a you know, uh, plasma discharge that took place. And actually, we found plasma discharge 24 hours before it happened. Um, one of those scientists, Chris, you were with me when, yeah. uh, when we were in that um, chat room. One of the scientists from Siding Spring was with the you know, theory of electric universe. And they expected that there was going to be, because they, they thought it's going to be so close, there's going to be a, a, a plasma discharge. I, I, had been, I had been studying that phenomenon, actually, for probably about 10 years before Comet. I've never heard of it. Spring, and, then, and I, you know, I thought for sure that Matthew had thought 
that you know when yeah. two those big when you have big bodies like that in outer space when they get close together they're gonna have a static electric discharge and I was, you know, it was automatic for me I knew I knew that was I never said anything really to them and then that happened like, well why didn't you just ask me I could have told you yeah I never even thought about it until that scientist asked um, you know the, the we had a, a, a subscriber who was at the, the observatory that night and he asked me if yeah. um, plasma discharge was anywhere in there. And so, you know, we found that. And well, lo and behold, the plasma discharge happens, just like they had theorized. And, uh, J- J7409 actually got a, uh, a picture of, of the flash. Yeah. It was a very, you know, washed out, you know, very grainy. But she, she actually got it with her telescope, a big flash from, from it. Yeah. So they, it was absolutely some deep revelation there. The father was telling us a big picture. You know, first of all, he tells a story with the stars. And what are we talking with Mars and with a comet coming in close and doing what it did? Uh, it, it was given an indication of, of, you know, impending war in the future. And I still think I, I, we're seeing I was, we're see that. I was looking at that as the, the, the rise of the next Israeli empire. Yeah, it's and usually within are, four years of a major comet uh, that there's a war that breaks out. And so that's been uh, my analysis of that. And um, I think we could see, you know, the, the chess pieces being played on the board now, the way it, it seems like it could be a very probable um, thing to happen. Well, it, it, it coincides with scripture. It's what it says will happen. Um, but yeah, there was no divination there. That was it was complete revelation, um, and that's just one table. There's been many. Um, Ariel Sharon, for instance, Ariel Sharon was in a coma for seven years and then dies on the eighth. Uh, you know, the Father reveals that in a huge way, a lot of details before it actually happened, and um, you know, it's completely the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say it took me three years to publish this Bible code. I mean, I, I showed this on another session with uh, Brother John a couple of years ago in a, in, a, in, a, in a live setting, but I never actually published this for people to see. I thought I've talked about it, but this is the first time I actually published. It took me three years to publish this and to look very closely and, and let, let the Holy Spirit lead me because they're, right? I never, I never knew that, that Ephraim and Judah were the, two main characters that are in the first seal being opened. I had, I had to uh, come to that revelation before I could actually publish his Bible code. Cause I didn't know why Ephraim was there and I didn't know why Judah was there. And I was told through the church that the white horse is the, the antichrist, which is wrong. It's the red horse. Actually the white horse is, is, is is a typology of of the one who will be coming later on on the white horse, Yehushua. And and so uh, that so there were things that me I needed to be revealed first before I could even publish this. And I I knew that I knew the Holy Spirit was going to reveal those things. But later I had to I had to have patience with my heavenly Father, and not be hasty. Mm. So, very good. Anybody got anything else to get a share? They want to share. They want to talk about. All right. Well, I'm gonna close this out. I was. I did record this section of it too. Uh, just to let you guys know. Um, great meeting. Um, be sure to join us again on, on the next one. And, Thank you again, everybody who contributed, and and just for showing up.